hate it, but I was never like a huge fan of it. Mm. That's what it smells like to me. Mm. So uh, basic. Mm. I mean, the ginger beer definitely the diff- helps it. it. Yeah. You want to try this? <laughs> no. No. Oh, I already. Sh- I taste the sugar. I'm already diabetic now. <laughs> Diabetes. I'm now. Now I'm diabetic just from that shot. It was good though. It, it was too. It tastes sweet. good and like as like an ice cream float with vanilla ice cream. Probably. Fuck yes. I don't have to wake up early to do art tomorrow. My children. You don't have to do anything tomorrow. I have to go pick up uh, both my kids, but not until later. Wait, are they both over there? No, uh, Joey's over at Grandma's, and Mm -hmm. then Robin went to Chloe's. Is that the one in the South Side? No, that's the one in uh, Snotsdale. Hmm. Yeah, but I'm glad she got out of the house. At first, she was like, um, she was invited to go tubing today. And I said, well, you should definitely go because she's always wanted to go. But she's never been a good enough swimmer whenever anybody was going. And that's one thing about the river is you want to at least know how to swim. Yeah. And I don't want to be worrying about my child not coming back. And she's like, I don't know, because you always hear about people dying. And I'm like, those people are drunk or doing stupid shit. Most of the time, it's not, like, normal people, quote, unquote, air quotes. Mm. Um, it's, it's drunk idiots that are doing stupid shit, and that's a majority of the deaths that happen to me. Yeah. Not all, but a majority. But then she decided she wanted to go to Chloe's, so I took her over there. I picked her up this morning because I was up late last night because I was working on art because I had a really rough week mentally. So I was up really late working on art. I didn't even get to sleep. What is late to you? I laid down about 1230. Uh, Thank you. I know. I finally fell asleep about four, maybe. Well, I'm not a, I'm an, I'm a different kind of insomnia. I can fall asleep. I can't stay asleep. Like, I'm up all night, like, off and on. I'm always... Up. Well, yeah, let's... I am, too. Like, if I go to sleep... Like, the other day, I fucking took a melatonin, and it only keeps me asleep for, like, an hour or two, and then I'm up. Well, see, I'm not, like, up, up, but, like, I'm a very, very light sleeper, which, it's funny, in my DNA test results, it even says I need to nap, because I don't sleep Do well. you nap? I do nap. I nap almost every single day. Even Joe knows. Like, when I'm done with work and he's back with Joey, he's like, all right, is it nap time? And if I'm, like, tired, I'll go lay down for an hour and a half and he'll wake me up. I try to take a nap every single day and it has helped me immensely. I only nap if I'm depressed. Which is the first time in my whole entire life, which is now. (laughs) Aw. I'm I'm getting better. I'm sorry. I I was fighting a spiral this week. I was not happy about it. I just... I, I had had just, I couldn't deal anymore. I was overloaded with zero spoons and in a deficit. See, here's my thing. I've spent my whole entire life being sad and just keep going. Mm-hmm. So the first time in my life, because of the pandemic and then now my separation with my, my ex, my wife, I am allowing myself to be sad. And you absolutely have to because it is unhealthy to not... If you have that feeling inside of you, you should, at some point in the very near future, analyze that feeling. Allow yourself to feel it. Because if you don't, it's just going to fester. Yeah, especially because I lost my godfather and my one of my closest uncles this year. How is your uh, cousin doing? Eh, we don't talk very much. He's married now, and like we hardly ever talk. Is he doing... You don't know how he's doing since the COVID? Uh, oh, the cousin that has COVID? Yeah. Still has COVID. His, Still. And his fucking boyfriend has uh, blood clots in his lungs. Oh, Jesus. Are they in the hospital? or are they, they sent him home with medication. Oh, that's good. They're I... both at home right now. Oh, that's good. Um, and do they have people bringing them food? or? Yeah, yeah I think they're good. Okay. Um, but you then, should make sure. Oh, that we're... Yeah, he's fine. Okay. And then we have my... Um, a person that I know from the drug community that was anti-vaxxer. Who has COVID now? And deleted all their posts about being an anti-vaxxer. And now saying that they wish that they would have gotten the fucking vaccination. And their wife got 
got it and her mom got it and her mom's dying in a hospital with uh, COVID pneumonia. So it's... There was a party that Joe had wanted, had considered going to. Mostly because he's an extrovert. He's vaccinated. You know, what have you. And, you know, he would like to see people. I don't blame him. I under, I can, I can understand to a point because whereas people drain my energy, being around people and socializing helps recharge his energy. So I respect that. And if he hears of an event or a party or what have you, pre-COVID, yeah. I'd be like, yeah, go. I don't want to go. Just don't drink and drive. If you're going to drink, stay there. Let me know. What have you. But he decided he, he didn't even bring it up to me about wanting to go to this party. And it turned out there was at least 50 people there. Like, it was a big... That's crazy. I, I agree. Um, and this is comprised nobody's really seen each other in 18 months. And these are friends that have been missing each other and this and that. Well, at least one person showed up with it. Oh... So far, like, ten people from that party have gotten it bad. Jesus. I told Joe, I said, I am very glad that you decided to stay home and not go. I go, that being said, nobody's going out and having a life right now. (laughs) End of story. (coughs) We've gotten this far in this house without getting sick. Outside of allergies. And I'd like to keep it that way. Well, you heard Obama had his party and 60 people got sick. Oh, no His shit. birthday party. I... I think that's... Yeah. I feel for people. I know people want to go back to normal. God, so do I. All these concerts are fucking super spreaders. Uh-huh. And a lot of people are canceling. A lot of people I are canceling. Have you heard of and Cambria? If they did or not. Yeah. I think they're playing at a location, though, that... Because that a lot of the Arizona local venues got together and made a pact that they're not going to let anybody in unless they have their fucking vaccination or they have a negative uh, test test within 72 hours of the show. See, that's smart. Oh, so many people are pissed. They're like, you're losing money. You're going to lose money from us. Better than losing fucking money. They've been closed all of COVID. I support these local businesses that are fucking watching out for the musicians that are coming in and their fucking staff yeah. and their fucking people coming in to spend money. Of course, yeah, I support them. And so many people are so upset about it. And it's like, stop being a fucking selfish bitch. You are saying, like, there's this whole new project family or protect family thing that's going on Facebook. I don't know if you've seen it. If you look at hashtag protect your family or protect family or some shit like that. It's fucking ridiculous where these parents are saying that their children have gotten these diseases from the Pfizer shot where their fucking hearts, their, all these other things, I don't even know, that are a fucking problem. And it's not because of that. And if it is, it is a pre-existing condition that probably had happened beforehand. Would it be protect your family? Yeah. Okay. Like, it's fucking ridiculous. Like, I saw it because somebody posted it yesterday. Well, and this is the thing, folks. I mean, nobody wants... I don't want to see anybody die, per se. I, You know my viewpoint on anti-maskers and anti-vaxxers at this point in time because I am exhausted with being stuck at home. And I'm exhausted with having to wear a mask. And I hate it, but you know what? I'm still doing it because it's not about me. It's about everybody else. Yeah. It's about my in-laws who are immunocompromised and older. And it's about being able to see the few fucking people that I do see on a regular basis. Yep. So it's just, yeah, I'm tired of it. I want to go back to normal. I want to be able to... I don't think there's going to be a normal anymore, though. I want to be able to actually... I don't know. I'm such a recluse that maybe it isn't such a bad idea. Because I was like, I want to go to the mall. No, I don't. I can go to Barnes & Noble. Not a lot of people go there. 
Like, I'm left alone when I go there. Okay. See, tomorrow I'm going to a drag pageant because I was invited. And I went last week. And I wore a mask in. Then you sit at your table and you're drinking, so you take it off. I'm of the opinion that once you're sitting down and you are containing yourself into a small area, I take my mask off. Like, during dinner, we weren't wearing our masks when we were sitting down, but I got up to go to the restroom, and I had the mask on. Yeah. So, yeah. And the people that we were surrounded around, people that we were with were all vaccinated, because they're definitely... Because, you know... Oh, people from this event that I was telling you about, at least two of them that I've talked to have gotten both doses of the vaccine. So I was asking her, I said, well, how does it feel having COVID? Because she got both doses. Yeah. Um, because she's immunocompromised. She's got fibro and she's got several other things. And she's all, it was probably hands down feeling like the worst head cold I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I'm a dragon. I'm a dragon. Ah, spicy. Ready? Breathe. No. What if it did happen? That'd be fucking cool, and we wouldn't be able to take a picture of it, and it would never <laughs> happen again. But she said that um, it was like the worst head cold she had ever experienced, but she thinks she got off light because she was vaccinated. Our friend Aaron, he just went in and got his first dose, but he had COVID Thanksgiving. Oh, shit. So, he only has to get one shot, because he already had it. And apparently, he technically doesn't even need to get it, but he wanted to have that added uh, buffer there. So, and we told him, we're like, dude, take the next day off, just in case. You're going to be tired. You're probably going to be sore. Just take a day. (laughs) So, he did. He thanked us, because he slept all day. (laughs) I feel like 2020 didn't even happen because you're like, it happened Thanksgiving. And then in my head, it was like, well, it it didn't start happening until January. (laughs) But you know what? When I got really sick in 2019, it was like June or July. And I swear it could have been COVID because the doctors were like, we don't know what this is. We have you on the strongest fucking medication that you can have. And you are not getting any better. I felt like dying. I was sick for a month. And, like, I I lost my job because I was sick. Well, January of 2020, Joey and I were both really sick. I was down at urgent care, and they're all the best we can figure out is you have an upper respiratory infection. That's what it told me. They had me on a breathing treatment and this and that because I couldn't breathe. Ever since then, I've had my cough. Don't talk about my smoking because I had the cough from, yeah, yeah, whatever. Then... That same month, we were sitting in our living room, and where Joey's bedroom was, he was asleep. All of a sudden, we hear, <laughs> we go and he can't breathe. He didn't sleep with a sippy. He, this was last year, so it's not like you had a sippy cup or a pacifier or anything. Yeah. We had to call the fire department out here because all of a sudden our, you know, four-year-old or five-year-old isn't breathing properly and he's gasping for air i took him to i think his pcp the following day and they said the best thing we can think of is he ha- he has the flu i still think that joey and i both had covid because that was it was already in the country by then but i still got my vaccinations just to be safe and once they are available for children joey will get his too I cannot wait for them to be available for children because when I go to pick up my nephew, nobody's wearing masks and he's a fucking five-year-old and I just get so scared and so sad and and nobody's wearing masks. And I saw one per, one kid out of everybody that I saw and I saw tens of children like out there Mm -hmm. and nobody was wearing masks. None of the teachers were wearing masks and I'm just like these poor children and it's just scary and I don't want anything to happen and he's only five years old. Yeah, he's an itty bitty and Joey is um, almost <laughs> I don't know how he's going to handle when we don't, if it ever comes a time where we don't have to wear masks because he is so used to it now that, I mean 
the first few days of school, I wasn't like you.